Welcome everybody to the Monday, September 25th meeting of the Conway Select Board. Uh, call the meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded by FCAT. will be on YouTube shortly, um, as well as your local cable access television station. First item, uh, vote to approve the minutes of August 28th, September 12th, and September 18th. Makes us look busy. Well, we have been. Did you get a chance to look those over? I did. I wasn't part of the August 28th, but the, the notes look great. You're still allowed to vote. Yeah. Yes, uh, I did. They all look good. Okay. Um, and a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Right over. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, warrants. We have. Three warrants, an account payable warrant in the amount of $589,661.81. A payroll warrant in the amount of $138,654.53. And a payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $33,503.72. I did look those over. Um, the, payroll, the payable warrant that 589000 that included a significant transfer from one account to the other, um, and which wasn't really, I mean, it's like a bookkeeping expense. And the other was uh, multiple, multiple large insurance payments, which are standard. I guess it's a quarterly thing. Um, payroll warrant in the amount of $138,654 is our way of welcoming back the school and all of its employees. Um, and the payroll deduction one is also similar, nothing, nothing at all, nothing to do with highway department or anything else. Um, so I move to approve those three warrants. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, it's unanimous. Meetings attended by select board members, Chris. Uh, I met with Lee Whitcomb and Ed Laureau um, to go over some of the uh, flooding issues that he's had next door here. Um, I'll speak with Ron and Veronique about that sometime this week. That's it for me. Erica? Uh, just the assessor's meeting last week um, where we voted on our tax rate here. But our, our single tax rate for the town, non-commercial. Yeah, yeah, I was at that meeting. And you were at that meeting too, so. Yes, and um, <laughs> the, you know, the, the long, you know, what, what, what I remember from that is just how, uh, how sad our new growth was. And I think it was, I did the percentage, it was 0.2%. Of, our, of new growth, so it was like one hundred and thirty, one hundred and forty thousand dollars, and which is most distressing because that's the amount that the town, you know, that, that the town, um, the town's finances grow from year to year, and <clears throat> I think the cost of living, I mean, it's defined, which is defined in a lot of different ways. There's COLA, whatever, and Social Security, all these other things. Those are all six, seven percent. And when the town income goes up 0.2%, that just does not leave us with much to help people, to help our employees out, to help our unions out, anything. We're, yeah, so still, still rather distressed by that, but there, you know, that's just what the numbers are. Um, and did have a number of other meetings as well, though. Is there any public comments? So our unfinished business, which is our standard uh, until further notice, discussions of flooding, the rain events of July, remediation of damages, compensation, residential concerns, town infrastructure, assisting with individuals and nonprofits, obtaining compensation, all that. So um, you know, we did have this could this there's an item that could go under this category it could also go under the within the past 48 hours uh, exception to the uh, to, to a more accurate description in the agenda as well but 
we might as well just do it now. And Turtle situation. So, um, on the South River behind Carrie Lusigan's house, Dr. Lusigan's house, a um, uh, large tree fell completely across the river, blocks five. Five trees. Five trees. Yeah. Five trees. Yeah. yeah. So one, one really large one, though. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, <clears throat> it, it's definitely a situation where if it floods more, which we have every reason to expect could happen any day because it's Conway, um, uh, you know, that could put that property in jeopardy, um, the people's safety in jeopardy. Uh, we earlier voted uh, for Pantamel um, for, to, uh, and this was, uh, this, this started at ConCom, really. It started with a resident's complaint to ConCom, um, and then ConCom got it here, which is, to me, that's a bit like the tail wagging the dog. It should, in future, should rip the, the original well, it's impetus. Well, property, that's why we got involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the impetus to take action should start with the select board, and it should then go to ConCom. Um, but the uh, and and you know once it, it looked like the thing was going to be dead in the water that um, the state regulators had a bunch of concerns and uh, I was pretty well convinced that it wasn't going to be possible but I, I do got to hand it to our town administrator she did work this you did work this problem with diligence um, and turned a no into a yes however. The yes came with conditions, which is eternal monitoring, turtle protection, and turtle mitigation plan, uh, and a recommended contractor. We got the contract from Stockman Associates. It calls for an additional $1,900 expenditure, which would bring this total cost to the town um, almost $6,000. $6,000. And I just, the, the scope of the work, it's $500 to come up with a turtle protection plan. Um, it is $55 to have an educational session with the contractor. It is $605 for a machinery sweep and on-site monitoring during the work, five hours. It is $150 for a collection permit if there is any turtles. It's another $500 for a compliance report. Um, and the hourly rates for the turtle biologist is $110 an hour, um, for the total being, the total estimate being $1,900, but the document that we are being asked to sign could exceed that estimate um, they set forth you know, for instance, for things like travel. Um, so, um, you know, the, the, the plan of the turtle protection thing is 150 feet of the river on both sides. I, wa I, I walked that in 15 minutes. But that's what we're paying for. It's required. Right. We don't have a choice. If we want to do the remediation of that yes. riverbed, we have to. And it's required to be done as the equipment moves up and as the equipment moves back. Right. So there's yes. a lot involved. And so, a lot of the things that are on there are like standard that are required by. Correct. So. Correct. They just sound really bad when you actually read them because, yeah. Um, yeah. Just add this to the list of the things that you expect yeah. for the state to not reimburse us for. A hundred percent, exactly. That, hence my frustration that, um, these are, that we're spending this in deficit. This is not part, this was not listed as part of our initial damage assessment of $3.9 million. Oh, I think we have two mil in there. Maybe, I had but, that not, not, the turtles, not, but turtles, not the turtles. Not the turtles. No, no, I have not, not the turtles. Well, now we know. Yeah. The actual, Next time, add the turtles in. The actual length of the work is three hours. The five and a half is including travel, so it's actually only three hours of work. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you for clarifying. I feel so much better. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is if we want this project to be done, and I'm okay if you vote to not do it. By the way, um, but if you want this project to be done. It's another $1,900, and... Uh, well, it seems like it's, I mean, 
the, the riverbank needs to be taken care of, and this is... Yes, and we're on a timeline due to yes. the yes. So, uh, so the thing about it is when you look up and down the river, not necessarily South River, but if you've driven down 116 and you look at the Mill River, which is also Conway, and you see that there's fallen trees every five feet, like horrendous amounts of fallen trees, we cannot afford to remove all them in this fashion. And, um, and, and you know, there's really nobody, no home, there's a few homes right around, right on there that would be affected in case of flooding. But um, for me, this is it. This is it for our turtle. This is it for the turtles. This is it for the, our, 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 our obligations under uh, tree removal in rivers. And you know, one of the things that I did notice in Dr. Lusigan's letter to us was um, you know, her asking why the town, you know, the, her, her recollection that after Hurricane Irene, when there were trees right knocked all over near her house, the military came, the National Guard came, and removed all of those trees. And, um, you know, it really would have been nice if the National Guard would have come and helped us and removed trees. But they didn't. I'll leave it at that. So, um, if anybody wants to make a motion to sign this contract, yeah, I move that we sign a contract with Stock with Stockman Associates for um, Turtle Safety. I don't know what, what would we even call it. The Turtle Project. And, yeah, Turtle Protection Plan and turtle Monitoring protection. Proposal. Yeah. A contract dated September twenty second, twenty twenty three. I'll second, given the time constraints. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, yeah. I'll abstain. Two up two zero one. I just can't bring myself to vote for this, but time constraints and we got this far along. Can't can't let the turtles down. Um, so I'm signing it now. And just since we're on that subject, the current projected date for um, completing the work is October 5th. It absolutely has to be done by the 30th, right? By the 15th. By the 15th. Okay. Because that's when they hibernate? That's when they begin to hibernate. Smart turtles. <laughs> Anything else on, in that whole category? The meeting upcoming on Wednesday, do you want to talk about that? Um, sure. Um, I was going to do it after we, we had the meeting. But so we're um, in trying to investigate different areas of town that have problems with drainage and how the town might be able to work with residents. You know, we had the um, environmental. Uh, wetlands protection people look up at the area of Pine Hill and Upper Baptist and Baptist. Um, unfortunately, they, you know, that project can't help us. So then I reached out to the FERDCOG and said, is there anybody there who might be willing to take a look at it and give us some help or guidance? So they're going to come on Wednesday, and Phil and I are going to meet them up there and just review the whole situation with them. Okay. That's good. That's, That's good. good. I mean, that can't. I mean, it could be a total waste of time, but that's okay. It can't really hurt beyond that. You've got to reach out everywhere we can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's at 1 o'clock, or is that at 10? I forget. Let me know if you can so that I'll post it. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, if you can, though, it's, it's worth yeah. okay. it. Show posting. you just can't talk. Right. You know what? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's already too late for me to post. I'll yeah. upstate so, post. <laughs> I cannot join, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, new business. Go to appoint Catherine Clark. What the hell? The Open Space Committee. Her term ending 6 30 25. Um, 
Kate Clark's a good, good, very good um, addition. She's been volunteering at that South River Meadow. She's been doing bird houses and uh, see her there a lot. She's also got a fine singing voice. So I would move to appoint her to the Open Space Committee for term ending June 30th, 25. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, discuss on discuss and vote on the proposed pollinator garden in Veterans Park. So this is a project that I think we all know about. Um, I think it's really an impressive project. It's taking a part of that's right across the street from town from town hall here. It's it always was just weeds and poison ivy and uh, really sketchy looking ground right along the border of the parking lot with the house next to it. So the whole Veterans Park will remain the same except for that border area, which instead of being weeds and poison ivy will be native plant installation and the group Pollinator Conway um, is going to do that. We already approved the plan and um, this is reapproving that portion and also just it's a more detailed look at what they're going to be doing and so um, they, you know, this is the design sketch. Um, Chris, you were part of the initial build out. I was. Do you have anything to say about this? I think it's a great idea. It's a long term investment and it's beautification of our down, <laughs> downtown area. Uh, our commercial district. Yes, the commercial district. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, it looks, it already looks way better even yeah. without the new planting. Um, I looked through their proposal moving forward. It would be great if they could get the funds from the conservation district as they note on here. I don't think that they're going to be able to get those large trees removed unless Walter says so, but they don't look like they meet the criteria for shade tree laws. Um, but I, I, I love this idea. I think it's great. Yeah, they're doing a great job. And uh, the one thing that I had asked was that they um, coordinate with someone from Festival of the Hills to make sure they're not going to be using up any festival space, and they're not. When you look at the plan, it's Fest, you know, festivals in the lawn. This isn't in the lawn. So, um, and really, congrats to Kendall Clark, to Cynthia Lawton Singer, and Kate McDonough. Um, so, I I would uh, I would endorse and uh, recommend the proposed pollinator garden in Veterans Park. That's a motion. Yeah, that's a motion. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous, right, Eric? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, discuss plans for the Bigelow property by open space. I, I, I thought Janet was coming. I thought she was going to, so that's why I'm confused. Yes. She said she was coming. Yes. Um, I don't know if you want to put that off because I don't have any description. She was just going to come talk about it. And the only thing right. I did was put the Bigelow deed in the packet so that you knew um, the property. In Janet's was. absence, I will say what I know about the project since I have spoken to her about it. Um, and the Bigelow project is behind Michelle Harris's up, up the hill a little bit across from the, the cemetery. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, what is it, two acres maybe? Um, it's it's open ground. I was going to describe it as weeds and whatever. Uh, traditionally, Ron Sweet has bush hogged it once a year. Um, they're asking that he not do that this year, which I'm sure he found. I'm sure he was grateful for that request. Um, and they're going to. The plan is to selectively mow a walking path, and then to highlight the pollinator species and the. Uh, the items that you know, what the the grow the things that are growing are, that are of uh, interest to fans of flora and fauna in our area, um, and uh, that's pretty much 
what I know about the uh, property. Um, so that it's just a here for a discussion and not a vote. So I don't know that there's anything you know, she shows up to. So yeah. more details. So how many acres? I believe it's two. Uh, just over two. I think oh, it's yeah. Is that what it says? Yeah. That, that was just my yeah, guess so. from walking it. Um, well, the property was given to the town is under um, the Conservation Commission. Yes. So mm -hmm. Open Space has been working with the Conservation Commission yeah, about this project. Thank yeah. you for adding that. That is okay. that is true. And the Conservation Commission is all in on to, you know, to, it's just going to, they're just going to mow with a hand mower, mm -hmm. uh, a walking trail. So Great. That's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> exactly. Um, <clears throat> um. So there's, I mean, it's it's town property. And we just, it's not. There's, we don't need to vote on this. It's basically just we tell Ron, don't, you know, don't mow anymore. Right. And I did, I did um, let him know that. I don't know that there's a vote needed as long. As, I mean, it would be nice just to hear from Janet and the ConCom and just mm -hmm. say together this is what we're doing. But yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's very non-controversial. Of all, of all, of all the possible things they could be involved in, it's probably the least controversial. So, uh, um, and really, nobody's been doing anything with that. It's just been getting bush hog. Right. The reason, and the reason they did that was to make sure that it still stayed small enough brush to yeah. be a shelter for the birds. Yes, exactly. It's a good point too. See, so you're, you're filling in all the details very nicely. Um, uh, discussion and vote on letter to the Department of Public Utilities regarding uh, the, the DPU's attempt or ongoing attempt to establish guidelines for municipal aggregation proceedings. And in this, we have discussed with Bob Armstrong, who is um, the guru of Conway's municipal. Aggregation, so that was for that's what we do for electric. Uh, you know, I think yeah. one way is one of thirteen or fourteen towns in Franklin County. See our last meeting. <laughs> yes. Where, where Bob laid this out. Yes, yes, and um, you know, the, there is of course um, the DPU is taking a, is, it, is it, what they intend to do, um, and I think it's a fair characterization is sort of take away a lot of the authority of towns to work things out on their own um, and um, centralize the process. Uh, take away this, the small broker's ability to function within that process. Um, and, you know, as much as it pains me to admit that I was wrong about this from the very beginning, um, I was wrong about this from the very beginning. I, when this was proposed, I voted against it like two or three years in a row. And I voted because at the time, I didn't think it was transparent enough. The broker that was running the, you know, that, that was presenting these contracts for us was under no obligation to disclose financial reward. Um, uh, and, yes, it is Janet. Um, and so, you know, uh, DPU, uh, you know, there's a lot of issues that everybody has with that, but one of the things that about DPU that any co corporation that they regulate, besides guaranteeing like a 10% profit on everything that they do, they require that corporation to disclose earnings, profits, uh, profit and loss, all that sort of thing. So you can take a look at ever you can take a look at Eversource's financials, and you can see how much money they make every year. You can you know all that. So I thought that's one good thing, and that's what I wanted to see happen. And so I guess that's the one good thing that if DPU does do it, and if they want to do it, they'll do it. Um, you know, but presumably there would be more disclosure of the profits being made. But when you look to see what what the type of um, electric products were that were offered to our town. Um, there was very little profit margin for the broker. Yeah. You know, there was like no, and I, I'm fully satisfied that it was uh, not a huge. You know, the, the only the only way that really it made sense for the broker was the fact that they got the 13 or 14 towns involved. 
that made it instead of pennies, it upped it to dollars. But um, but still, so that. But basically, um, so we have a we have a proposed here a, a proposed initial comment to the DPU's attempt to regulate, and base it, it's going to take away. <clears throat> It's going to take away a lot of the savings that the town enjoys, and it's also going to take away, if, if their regulations come to pass, it's also going to take away some of the options that instead of, like right now, we, we do four options, three options, um, basically three, three. three, and they're going to take away the option of like all green, whatever. What they, what they do is default you to basic. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is not what... We're defaulted to here, yeah. so it's, yeah, and, and it'll just the way local control exactly. And, and just to let you know too, there is also um, we've also been asked to uh, let uh, the same um, broker know whether they can put the town of Conway's name on a support letter for H three eight five two, which is. Um, it says H3852 will empower municipalities with existing electrical load aggregation programs to more effectively update and operate their programs and foster the expansion of these programs to other cities and towns throughout the Commonwealth. So it's this, it's kind of a piggyback to the letter that you're looking at and considering signing right now. And so what the letter does <coughs> that we're contemplating signing, Conway suggests an alternative proposal. Um, that the DPU should return to its former approach to aggregation plan review prior to its current escalation in micromanagement. The, the, this approach could be implemented today. Um, the DPU recognized at the time the opportunities and protections available through aggregated service, that customers are always free to opt out at no cost, that municipal officials do not have any profit incentive, and the municipality is highly familiar with its citizens' interests and preferences. So the conclusion is that the Con Conway recommends that the DPU abandon its proposal and replace it instead with um, the way we were doing things before, the alternative proposal that we described in this letter. Um, so, I thought it was a great letter and it, it was very enlightening to me because, I mean, I 90% understood what Bob was explaining in our last meeting. Yeah. But this was, this was really at the made it very clear. And Bob is the one who put together this draft yeah. and the board. Yeah. Kudos to him. He's been working on yeah. this. He really he's does believe in this. And um, over time, I have, uh, you know, I have admitted repeatedly that he was right and I was wrong. Yeah, I thought this was great. I think they're, they're just like a title. So I, yeah. I think. Okay. <laughs> Rather so, than that, I'm <clears throat> totally happy to sign. Uh, I'll make that motion. I'll make a motion uh, for the select board to sign the letter to the DPU uh, in conjunction with the support for the advancement of Bill H-3852. Um, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 The, the only thing that I would add, or I would ask, Ronnie, if you, there's no date, that there's, some, there's no date on this letter. Okay. If you could just add a date at yeah, the end of it where we signed. I think this, I don't know, I think this is a typo on it. Okay, all right. So so I'll, I'll make the changes and keep the back here. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um. Okay. This is the one that we signed with the tag on it, and this is the one circled okay, on the first I page. I could be wrong, because it's all. That was just my one question. That might actually be accurate. I think it is lower. Okay. All yeah, right. I just, yeah. So. <laughs> okay. And um, since we are now joined by Janet Chase, chair of the Open Space Committee, we did have a discussion of Bigelow because we weren't sure whether you were showing oh. up. But um, just the, as best I could recollect my discussion with you oh. about Bigelow, I didn't. Oh. So, but okay. uh, there's no vote on it, so. Right. Um, right. But I did want to bring it in. Please do. Minor reason about them. Um, so we have living in town now a fellow named Owen Worm Sinner, who yes. is uh, oh yes Owen yes. specializes in um, 
Native Community Restoration Lawns into Garden is this book that I forgot to bring, but here it is. It's a nice little end of yes. the New York Times. Yes. Anyway. We, he, would, um, he would love the publicity for his book. We should have remembered the title. Don't say that. Sales are I low. Said, Sales are low. Here it is. Lawns into Gardens. Exactly. That's it. That's the title. <laughs> uh, and he consults and he has projects all over the place. Yes. But he lives in Conway and has agreed so far to um, help us with the Bigelow wow. Meadow, which has been sort of a thorn. Um, for a long time, it's kind of a largish area, and how to manage it more effectively. And it's a natural condition; it can't be developed. It's a permanently protected area, and um, he he did a plan with some walking trails. We decided to go slow, um, and we found. Blank here, uh, Roanbrook Excavation, who, whose name is Dan Potters. Potter. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Potter. Nick. Uh, Nick. Nick. So um, Nick has agreed uh, to work with Owen to do selective a selective mowing, uh, which is how you begin to help identify good plants that you want to keep. Let some native shrubs that are already there, hopefully maybe let a few of them come back, and then also be able to see the property better because when it's a long stick, it's hard to wade through. Um, so the, uh, the Open Space Committee has some money set aside to implement the Open Space and Recreation Plan, which I'm a little grant, and they authorized up to $2,000 for this selective moment, which hopefully will commence this fall while they can see some things. So, and then we will at some point bring in some of the other neighbors. Some of the, other, the neighbors have been consulted off and on, but to bring them in and we can all have better visuals from sort of the top. I mean, one goal is recognizing how important it is to protect the privacy of the direct abutters, particularly in the lower, mm -hmm. the lower slope. So. That's what I wanted to share with you about Bigelow, so Ron doesn't have to mow the whole thing anymore. I had previously had a bunch of correspondence with the Conservation Commission just to update the new members that, uh, that they hold the conservation restriction. Uh, and one of the members went on one of our walks up there. So that's basically what we, oh, minor point. We had in the South River Meadow down in this corner, there's a big tall Kestrel bird box that the state gave us, most of it, a few years ago when we first started habitat re restoration. And uh, it's not been occupied by a, a Kestrel. Um, and our, our thinking is I'm moving it up someplace on the big below meadow up there on the hill it might have a better chance, so it's a kind of minor. Uh, yeah, the Kestrel's in a, the, in a hollow tree across the street from me on Baptist Hill Road. Cool. It's a Kestrel nest. Really? Cool, unless you have a bird feeder and you watch your birds. They family. don't eat birds. They I've eat been, birds. Have you, you have evidence? I have witnessed it. Like, what did they eat? Maybe what what did they eat? There was a little bird flying around, no. there was a blur, and then there was pink mist. <laughs> Are you sure it was the Kestrel? <laughs> I think you're blaming you, it on someone you else. That photographic There's no photographic evidence, I but I was like, oh my God. You know, there are a lot of uh, I just wanted to feed the birds and I'm still, and still I'm, 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 no. I'm okay. participating right. in the murder right. of birds. Do we want to go with this aside? I have, for the first time this year, I had a nesting pair at our place. Because we have more open space there now. And I have a flock of like 25 bluebirds. And we watched the Kestrels hunt and raise their young all summer. They never went after birds, unless you know if they're really, really hungry. So that, but I, it might have been like a sparrow hawk. It might, I think you might have been blaming this on another, because there are other hawks. Your camera. Possibly. <laughs> it was very, very fast. It was just a blur. Go eat. Just a bird. I was looking at a bird one second, and then just pink mist the next second.
Pink mist. Well, oh, yes. well, 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 yeah, Owen has known him for years. There. He's really good, really good. Yes, yes. Um, on the uh, the Veterans Park planting out here, since then, I, and I think you got shared copies of the yes. proposal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Since then, we heard back from this uh, conservation district, and she says. Their board is more interested in supporting the project's phase two requirements when you would be purchasing native perennials. Good. But I mean, we want we want trees, some trees and shrubs, and we need help or some money to help move a few of the dead smaller trees that are there, and and they're <coughs> um, they're not really interested in the tree phase. So this is all still maybe to be continued, but uh, the pollinator, uh, pollinate Conway is uh, preparing a community press, a CPA request for that. For the trees, the trees. Yeah, yeah. And so I guess I would ask you to endorse them and us, or the open space committee is kind of sort of liaison uh, um, with Pine Conway to uh, to endorse supplying applying for any other appropriate grants, and then yeah, can, I mean, it, we once CPA approves it, then we endorse it. Well, then the town endorses it. That's what you no. Know, after we do, the town meeting does. You would endorse it just because it's town property. You do not individually approve it. You don't have to right. approve individual CPA projects going right. forward right. to town right. meeting. As you well know. Yes. Right, right. So this is, this is, um, you know, applying your support for the development of this more detailed CPA proposal. Um, yeah, we just did. Okay. Okay, but I mean, so it's not just before you walk in the door. We, just the, we, we, but yeah. I mean, you apply, you, you approve for the conservation district. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, that, we approved what, exactly? what we were asked to approve, um, right. which was the continuation of the, the, the of the plan that would, that we were provided. Right. Right. Uh, that plan was okay. It's open ended. Plan. It's open okay. Ended. Open ended. Right. Open ended. Right. Excellent. We, we all. Right. We think it's great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Chris volunteered his truck. Oh, the past. Right. 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 <laughs> maybe maybe we'll. I mean, we'll see how we get out those uh, the tree, the couple of trees that need to be. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With your little backhoe, somebody's little backhoe or whatever, a chain a chain on the truck. Yeah, of course, I'd be happy to. Put the, I'll, the, I'll help out. We might have, do we have to go through the whole process of? We want to remove a tree that we have to <laughs> let the town know and vote on it first. Well, they are shade trees. Oh dear. To the best of my knowledge, but I would defer to Walter. Okay. The ALA said, let's check with yeah. Walter. Technically, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I'll help out what I can. I have a chainsaw. Good thing to me. I'm with you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I did have um, another quick, quick item which was the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership. They have other grant opportunities yes, you know, for individual, and I wondered what the status of that is because there's other, another potential project that... Uh, uh, Their grant deadline just passed. Right, right, for next year. For next year, um, we're, we're all years. Uh, well, I, th I thought about you know the Millstone area on, the other, on 116. I had started applying for grant a couple of years ago. Yeah. It's if you come on to 116. Yes. That's okay. a civic embarrassment. Yeah. It's it a is. civic, I know. Yeah. It absolutely yeah. yes. is. That, that, the <laughs> number of people that drive past it every day and don't even know there's a covered bridge there mm -hmm. is, yeah. is sad. Right. And it's and it's a mess and it's covered with a, mostly Japanese yeah. Nazi. But it could be nice and there were plans mm -hmm. for a little, you know, a little walk trail or 
So potentially, uh, you know, if you support that, uh, uh, unless for next year something else might be in the works or something else deferred for that? No, I mean, I, I thought that that would be a candidate for, you know, Highway Department bush hogging over the winter months, with, um, something like that. But I, that gives, oh. that, that's how little I think of most of what's growing there. But Oh, um, well, if that's it, it's Japanese knotweed, most of it. It's, 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 yeah. it's, Mowing will absolutely not help. Not probably yeah. make it works. I mean, it needs chemical treatment. But it's the only thing that gets rid of nothing. Controls nothing. So, I, I think so, a, few, a couple years ago we did have an estimate from Bay State Forestry, but that was a couple years ago. They're still around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look into it. We're, okay. That's something that needs. Okay, I mean, because, you know, as you, you may recall, it has been ID in our various river studies, you know, the segments, but it was, I think I have, it was not a top flood control site, a flood mitigation site, but I mean, it was definitely, I mean, everything, everything helps, and they might expand the meander or something, whatever. Yeah, no, I don't. I I think for aesthetic reasons alone, that that, that that should shoot to the top of the list. I mean, maybe then we'd see when someone tries to drive a backhoe over the covered bridge and smashes into the top of it. Maybe maybe somebody could see. Maybe maybe people would see it this time. Oh yeah, when you go on the inside, you'll see where they scraped. Yeah. Would so would um, open space then be putting forth and? Uh, yes, I mean ho hopefully. So the Woodlands Partnership has another has another assistant. We worked with the one before, and this one I talked to it because they, they came to inspect with their Forest Service liaison to inspect the tree planting. Luckily, what they did, uh, Michelle and Val did a lot of uh, rewriting them and uncovering them from the flood. So it looked good, and the Forest Service was happy anyway. So this 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 other person who works there implied that she would like help, you know, help, oh, you'll help write the grant. Great, I said. So that's what I said. Um, I mean, those grants, I believe, are 20 or 25,000. Yeah. Oh, I've seen what they got. I mean, you have to make the case for showcase wood products and for forests. Yeah, but the river yeah. district is in their thing, too. Yeah. Water, everything. Yeah. They, yeah. They've increased the scope of their remit. Okay. And, uh, Great. Sounds good. And I take it you approve, Katie, the appointment? Oh, yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. Thanks. Yeah. Yes, thank you. All right. Thank you, Janet. Thank Thanks. you. Discussion and vote on new traffic layout at transfer station. So many questions. <laughs> I mean, it's not really new. No. Well, it's just like, so, I mean, this is the way traffic should always be flowing. Is it just, are we going to, like, make people not? So, yeah. Like so, if you look on there where it says stop, yeah, that's where we're up. stopping people from going. R okay. Right, so, so, it makes it, so the, because I was like, because that's where everyone stops right now. I know. And it's, but they all, they all, yeah. So, the idea that, the, the TSAs had put forward, which I, as soon as they started doing it, I thought it was fantastic, yeah. was to make it single file. And you go through, and I had actually started last year, and I'll finish it now, um, a handout for how to load your vehicle when you go to the transfer station, so that you load the stuff that comes out last first, mm -hmm. you know, so your trash is the last thing you put in. Um, so what I was thinking is that we could have a handout, you know, I can make it prettier than this, <laughs> but a handout showing people how to move through the transfer station, and then on the other side it says how to load your vehicle, just to try to, to help the guys. I know that, yeah. that some people have given some feedback that they don't like being single file, but the number of people that will be made more safe by having traffic not kind of going willy-nilly wherever they want, you know, and going through the line will hopefully, I, yeah. I actually didn't like the fact that everybody has to be single file around the bulky container, because people that stop to unload stuff in the bulky, that takes a while. That can take 10, 15 minutes. 
Even in front of the paper container can take. Well, so paper. what you could do, there it, for the, where the bulky is, they want to mark out two bays, basically one showing the driver when he comes in, he's dropping his new one here, and then he picks up the old one. Next time he comes, he's dropping the new one, and he picks. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. There will always be a little space right there where a car could park out of the line of traffic to unload. Now it would only be one at a time, but still, at least you could do that. So there'd be like a dedicated space to park mm -hmm. next to the bulky if yeah. you're unloading in the bulky. Yeah, there could be absolutely. Yeah, It'd be wherever the, the box yeah. isn't. But it seems what like about people who want to like back their truck up to the bulky? I mean, I, yeah. I I I think this is fine. I just feel like this is going to be like a lot of enforcement for the transit. For the transfer station tenants to be like, and you it know. seems like there's plenty of room to, in front of the bulky to, for people that just do trash and just want to leave, like to just. Well, leave. yeah, if you're like, doing that, you could just leave. You don't have to go through the whole gauntlet. Just well, that's what it's. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what no. it, it's not clear at all that that's the case. Yeah, yeah. So like right, that that one arrow that's between the metal and the yeah. stop should be like a dual arrow. So I could put one going from around the stop. Like right in front of the bulky, yeah. going that way. Yeah. So you could go this way instead of going exactly. all the way Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like that was, that was my concern. Okay. Yeah. Let's not do the IKEA exit. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you, you must go through the lighting department. <laughs> yeah. And the gift stop. And the gift <laughs> stop. <laughs> you will never get out yeah. of IKEA. And the souvenir. And the souvenir you shop. You have to stop at the mall. Yeah. You can leave when you see everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so true. And you know, I mean, if. What we could just say is we'll we'll have them try it and we'll see how how it goes and how the feedback <coughs> is. You know, I, I I am in favor of anything that makes the lives of the transfer station attendants easier. Like if yeah. this is going to be helpful, then and they definitely be. would like to yeah. do this. Okay, they, and they've actually got paint. They want to you know just paint the arrows around. Oh yeah. So we you should know. start a gift shop. Because <laughs> the Celtics and, and, and the, that's the Conway, Conway Mall, Mall. The, 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 gift shop. the Celtics and the Patriots. They, you know, that if you go to one of their games now, you have to enter the building through a gift shop. Yeah, and um, we should take over. You know, that's municipal revenue. With, exactly. Especially with our new T-shirt designs, they would fly off the shelf. <laughs> That's going to be my movie for the next movie night. Exit through the gift shop. If no one, if y'all haven't seen that, it's like. It's no, like, I like, haven't seen that. that. Art one. No, Banksy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, yes. Like, it's like. I've never even heard of that. Oh my god, you would love it. It's so good. Okay. Yeah. Let me know. I'm, I'm there. Um, all right. So with that, with that uh, correction or addition. Correction. Uh, yep. Correction. Yeah. I would. Uh, I would approve. Okay. I would move to approve the traffic uh, layout at the transfer station. I think they will be very happy. Because second. Second. Yeah. Sorry, I interrupted the second flow. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Um, discussion on the price of business licenses for 2024. For the two businesses, what is it? Two businesses that get licenses. Oh, that's fine. I just wanted to double check before I send the letters out because last year you gave another half off year. Yeah, I mean, I and so I was planning on doing full price, but I just wanted to double check that. The amount that the town gets from that is so it's, insignificant. It's, yeah, yeah that basically, it's, 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 it's the difference. Most of them are twenty-four or sixty. Yeah. So they've been doing twelve fifty and yeah. thirty. The only one that's significant is the inn, which is five hundred, but she's been doing two fifty for yeah, the Yeah, I, I, that's the only. <coughs> um, I, I. Isn't the max that much? No. Oh. No, it's, no, they're all right. either sixty or twenty four. So it's been twelve fifty and thirty. You know, it, we're we're talking about like a total of a few yeah, hundred dollars I mean, either way, and I think you can, I think it's a nice thing to do, as long before there's going to be a point in time where Furcock just comes down and says you can't do that anymore. So until then, yeah, I'm inclined um, to agree with Bill. I mean, it's not like this is not a revenue generator for the town. Yeah, I would just, rather just incentivize people to have a business in town. <laughs> so keep it, and yeah, uh, so I would I would move to keep the prices that they were. During 2023. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And with with hope that the trading post uh, 
manages to, uh, you know, I, I mean. He's <laughs> not an engineer today. And that's just, so. the, when, when, when we were here last, and the, the proprietor of the trading post was here to discuss the liquor license and plans, and I, we were asking him about plans. He answered, <laughs> unfortunately, the building inspector was paying attention and, her, and saw, saw the article in the paper that came out the next day. And, um, um, and the requirements for the poor proprietor dramatically increased. Um, and I, I, you know, that had to have an engineer had to get, yeah. Um, and I mean, that's just that's that it was it'll so. Be, the sprinkler system, if you really has to do that, that'll yeah, be that, that, that'll be the death knell. Um, so, you know, we forget we forget that when the town stopped doing business inspection, you know, building inspections, and we forget how many years ago that was. It wasn't that long ago. Um, you put yourself at the mercy of the big city biz building inspector, of, you know, Kirkhog and Greenfield and everybody else. So, so you know, un unfortunately, unfortunately, it's not. It, it didn't. It's not, not a Conway thing. We didn't have much of. We, we we had no say in what the what the building inspector requires. Um, we did have a say. We. Wouldn't approve of. I can guarantee you. Um, but nonetheless, I do hope he manages to overcome that hurdle as well. Um, and you know, in the future, maybe don't ask don't ask questions on the record at public meetings about those things because that didn't do him any favors. Um, it didn't. And that's that's sad that you can't talk about it as a way of you know as a way of introducing yourself to the town. No good can come of it. Um, anything else? Town administrative report? Sure. Well, we, we already talked about the turtles, so that... Yeah. <laughs> um, Jan Amin, the last Saturday was the annual household hazardous waste collection and Jane said we had a really good turnout for Conway which makes me very happy because that means all the hazardous waste is going to be disposed of correctly. Um, the sustainability committee just had its second official meeting and we had Allison Gage there from the FERCOG who is not only helping with green communities for Conway but also helping with MDP with the planning for the big um, uh, I forget what she's calling it now, but it's it's the big townwide free harvest meal that we're having to kick off the MVP program on October 21st, um, and it'll be out on the ball field. We decided it it was just easier for us to try to do it there rather than to shut down 116 or Academy Hill Road. So, um, knock on wood. Hope there's not an inch of standing rain. <laughs> well, they're planning to get tents and stuff, and you know. So, anyway. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think sustainability is really moving along. We've got great members. We need two more, in case anybody's interested. Um, that's the other thing that I had just updated recently on the website. So now in the middle of the website, you can see employment and volunteer opportunities a lot more easily. There's a button there. And so it's kind of buried under the uh, how do I, and then apply for, and then it went to town employment. So at least that's a little bit more upfront. Um, and actually, if you look at the list, we have quite a few of the committees that are actually full, which is really kind of nice. There's 12 openings right now. 12. Actually, that's like a historic low. Um, what, what was the issue that the select board kicked over to the sustainability committee a couple weeks ago? Street lights. We're discu they're discussing that Street at their next lights. meeting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I was thinking that maybe we should have just made the decision. I mean, I don't know. I'd really like to do something about that. Same here. Like, and I, I hope they should. Uh, you can let them know. Get do something about that quickly, or we're going to take that issue back. Because <laughs> it, it's there's, there's no take backs. Yeah, there there take backs. There's take backs. Um, I'm sure if the select board wanted to deliberate it. Well, no. Know. I mean, it's it's it, it makes sense that they should weigh in on it, but yeah. um, yeah. you know, but uh, you know, it's. 
get with the program here. <laughs> Let them know. <laughs> They're a new committee and they I know, two exactly. more members, so. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Just pass, pass the word. Pass the word. Put it on the agenda and make a decision. Was <laughs> um, um, that it? That's it. Select board member comments, concerns. Um, that just um, I don't know if you saw the the letters of the residents across from the South River Meadow about the uh, pickleball. Did you all see that? I did. I so, got very confused by it because I thought that they were saying in the letter that we had moved toward with proposing a plan for over there, and nobody did. And. No, it's before ConCom now, now. Yeah, or it will be on Tuesday. Right, that's um, what Bernie said. That's Jim Warner, but I mean the Parks and Rec Committee cleared that up too. I thought that was yeah, yeah. Major. I just thought, as far as na you know, resident le advocacy letters go, I thought that was a particularly well written one. Just not that I not saying that I agree with anything, whatever, but just as far as just as an example of how to do it. That's that's right up there. It was well written. Um, um. Yes. Also, speaking of resident concerns, I just do want to talk about Barbell's Ferry Bridge, oh, and yeah. that that is something that a lot of people are concerned about. Yes. We do need to have like a very public <laughs> update <laughs> about where we're at now and what. Yeah. 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 So I. Um, we did discuss it last week. Yeah. And, yeah. But you know, here's week. the thing about Barbell's Ferry Bridge. I just talk about this now because get the same questions a lot like how is it that you can have an inspection two years ago where it scores really highly in the inspection and when they do the next inspection they need to shut it down immediately urgently act like instantly and um, and that had nothing to do with our town and so the reason that, uh, that that they did that is because when the state last worked on this bridge which was 20 something years ago and at the time it was supposed to be a 40 or 50 year fix. The steel, the state, the specs that the state engineers did for the support steel underneath the bridge was called for standard structural steel instead of the much more expensive waterproof structural steel. And it turns out that when standard structural steel gets water infused, it goes bad really fast. If it gets rust, the rust spreads it, it, like wildfire. And swells up and whatever. And so that's how it happened within two years. So this was, in fact, something that the state engineer specs improperly, that its proximity to the river, the fact that it was supporting a bridge above river, should have led them to think, you know, maybe the waterproof stealing, the, you know, thing would have been a better idea mm -hmm. um, and you know instead now they have to rip the whole bridge up and whatever and so it's a major major project and um, you know and it didn't have anything to do with the wood decking it didn't have anything to do with Conway's usage of the bridge um, it, you know the town is innocent I tell you innocent and, um, and no really uh, but uh, you know and we are grateful that MassDOT recognize the town's inability to afford the millions of dollars that it will take to fix this bridge and are, are undertaking the, the project themselves. However, this is the, the full-on state contracting process where there's first a contract for engineering that gets let out, then a contract for design, then a contract for construction. Um, so, uh, you know, what I was told is that it might be done by next year, which of course means that it might not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so uh, I'm inclined to, as always, you know, I don't, my, my faith in the state these days is down. So I'm inclined to think might not is going to win out and um, will be closed for a while. The good news is that it's still open to pedestrians and bicyclists. The bad news is that uh, when they get closer to the construction phase, they'll shut that down without any further notice to us. Um, and so we, you know, we won't know. So I know that there's a number of people that bike that and walk that and run that, um, and that there's people that commute, especially people that work at GCC that commute by bicycle from Conway. Um, 
and uh, it's the prettiest they, road to travel from here to Shelburne. It's the prettiest road to travel. Yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely, and and especially when 116, what we're doing with you know the one lane in each direction stuff, and it was taking 10 to 15 minutes to get down that road. I was really yeah. missing at Bartwell's Ferry for a while, but. It's the fastest way to get to Posada. Mm -hmm. that, <laughs> yeah. too. that too. That too. And that's an excellent restaurant that people yeah. don't realize. I, I bet they're suffering. Uh, for sure. For that reason. But yeah, I, I think it would be good to have like an update in the next newsletter. And or it's just, you know, something. You know, I know we've been, we've been getting written questions by residents as well and, you know, detailed requests for, for weekly updates. And I was trying to say, you know, that's like a weekly update on grass growing or something. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, my, my, I think what I told that person is that if, if the state contracting process was in a foot race with a glacier, <laughs> the glacier would win. Um, so, you know, it's just, that's just how it is. Um, but, I, you know, I wish we had better news to tell people because... Unfortunately, you can't go in this newsletter for October because that's already printed. Um, yeah, but just again, yeah, I but for the yeah. next one, and we could certainly do more on that. Um, just so everybody at home is aware, the highway department has been posting updates on the website every week. So, and they do that on their Facebook page as well. Yeah. Um, and the highway department, we, you know, I didn't talk about this during the warrants, but I see it's in the packet. We are getting the weekly, you know, bi-weekly um, deficit spend as our so the uh, the the from September the month of September so far the deficit spend for building materials, road materials, and also um, pipes. Seven thousand dollars for culvert pipes, and uh, it was forty-two thousand two hundred twenty-seven dollars in deficit spending from the highway department. That does not include the nine thousand dollars in overtime, but that was total for August and September. Um, but it's forty-two thousand in just materials uh, deficit spending. Um, uh, also, the announcements: the Frontier Tennis and Pickleball project is finished. To all residents, you can use the Frontier courts. Actually, I saw those courts; they're stunning. Um, really nice. They came out really nice. So tennis, if you do play tennis, that court, those courts are in really good shape. The Conway tennis court is still okay, but um, you want to see what a really nice new court is with the new surfacing. And if you really play, if you're really into tennis, you appreciate that. Um, Bright blue. Yeah, it's it's nice. Um, it's also what eight or twelve pickleball courts? I forget. It's a lot of pickleball courts. Um, but there's, they have a huge number of people in Deerfield that play pickleball. I think their their pickleball group is like four or five hundred, and so and they're migrating up here. I see like too. Half the town of Deerfield. I know they're migrating up here too. I keep seeing Deerfield people in our pickleball court. I'm like, what are you doing? You're not helping us pay for our pickleball court, but we love you. Um. Yeah. Um, there's also, um, all right, um, Festival of the Hills is this Sunday, yes. October 1st. So it's also Saturday. The dinner, the turkey dinner, is at the grammar school at 6 p.m., I believe. It is $20 for home cook. It's like a seriously awesome dinner. Um, and it's $20 whether you eat there or whether you take it home. It is... Just just a few years ago, there was two seatings and they were sold out like months in advance. Now there's one seating and there's there's too many and you know um, there's plenty of seats left. So I I I'm not going to be able to attend this year. But I recommend this is the first year I'm going to miss it in a long time, and I recommend. I'm it. waiting tables. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I, but I, I recommend it highly. If you're listening to this, it's really a good, it's a, really a great meal, and um, it's it's, it's the, the principal fundraiser of the fire department auxiliary, and uh, they put the money to good use. And uh, Lord knows we put that fire department to good use during the month of July, pumping out most of the basements in town. Um, so. They, the auxiliary was there delivering French fries and coffee 
and the french fries were really helpful in the pouring rain the one day. Everybody enjoyed them thoroughly. Um, thank you, Helen, for those. Uh, uh, and what else? So, yeah, the parade is 1 o'clock. On Sunday? Yeah, parade is 1 o'clock. We didn't, I don't know. We're, we're supposed I, I assumed we were doing Yes, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's right but it's right but you don't have far to go. I know, yeah. Um, I get those t shirts ready. Actually yeah, none of us have very far to go actually. Um, we're gonna get arrested. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Um, someone will bake us a cake with a vial in it. We'll be we'll be free. Uh, what else? Um, the next meeting is October tenth. 23, there was another announcement that we were supposed to make. Because uh, the 9th is Indigenous Peoples Day, correct? Mm, so yes. that's probably Tuesday, the 11th. Yeah, Tuesday. 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 Yeah, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Yes. Um, yeah, so that's. Yeah, so um, okay. the Festival of the Hill still needs volunteers. They always need volunteers. So, if you know of anybody that's not doing anything, you really just an hour or two would help, especially in the beginning of it and the end of it. Take, set up and take down is what they really need people to help with. So, October um, 10th, I'm out of town. I can soon have Okay. Yeah. Very good. So, with that, I'll move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you, everybody.